Let's have a little look at NXT TakeOver Portland then taking place on the WWE Network um, this Sunday. So usually TakeOvers take place on a Saturday, uh, but instead it is uh, kind of on a school night, really, because uh, especially us watching it over in the UK might have to watch it um, w- into the wee hours of Monday morning or maybe when we all get back from home or school uh, on the Monday afternoon over here in the UK. But um, I think I'll be staying up to watch it. Um, it. It's an absolutely stacked card. Now, I sound like a bit of a broken record because I say that every time we talk about an NXT TakeOver card. But this one, it, it would be worthy of a kind of a TakeOver over WrestleMania week, to be honest with you. So if this is what we have to offer uh, this weekend, crikey, what are they going to throw at us for Mania weekend? But um, let's have a look at some of the matches for TakeOver Portland then, Ash, and I want your kind of thoughts and opinions and maybe a prediction or two. But um, let's have a look, first of all, at uh, Dakota Kai versus Tiga Knox. So this was a bit of a match that's been few, brewing for a while now, certainly since uh, TakeOver War Games uh, back in November last year, where uh, Dakota Kai turned her back on her then best friend, a, a team kick stablemate, by uh, ramming the, 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 the cage door into Tegan's previously injured leg, previously injured knee, keeping her out of business for a while. Dakota Kai turned full heel following that, they did have a bit of a match on NXT a couple of weeks ago, which I thought they probably shouldn't have had. They should have kind of saved it to uh, this match uh, in Portland to make it more special. But they're having a street fight in Portland. So um, they're going to fight all over the arena. Um, you know, it could be quite hard hitting, could be quite physical. Expect some uh, some chairs and tables and uh, all sorts getting involved and maybe some, some knee braces. Uh, more importantly, they've certainly been utilising that as a bit of an object. Uh, but Dakota Kai versus Tiga Knox, if I'm going to kind of, you know, um, throw my hat into the ring and give you my prediction, I think this has got to be a win for Tiga Knox um, so that both competitors can kind of move on to different feuds, different opponents. Um, but I think Tiga Knox is, is possibly winning here. And I think certainly with the series they're doing on her on YouTube and on the WWE Network, the kind of the four part series of her comeback from uh, previous injuries up to this point, um, I think is, is certainly doing a lot to help get her character over. Um, and I think that's all possibly with a view to uh, putting Tegan over on Sunday night. But Ash, uh, Tegan Knox, Dakota Kai, street fight. Uh, what say you? Um, it's a match I'm looking forward to. And also you've talked about the... Um many documentary series they've built around Tegan Knox without the injury it's like with her first injury it's a little bit of in-step storytelling it was actually an accidental being the injury he suffered with Dakota Kai when she was in the ring she's got kind of a little it's, a, it's not a, like a big part of the storyline but it's kind of a little thing where obviously it, was, obviously it was a complete accident that Dakota Kai was the person it happened with her first injury when you put out the first night young classic um it's a match I can see potentially possibly opening this card just to get the crowd, a good crowd heat. So you've got them hot off the start so they're not anticipating it throughout the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, I could def- I'm torn between the two at the moment who's going to win this, but I could see either winning it. But I think, as you mentioned, the song, I could see the use of the knee brace coming to the aid of potentially... Kai, she's been using it as a dominant weapon over the past weeks and also since the main attack that she did at War Games. So I, I'm i thinking Kai is going to win this, and even though you think you've only had the one match, even though it's like the only way you can go further if you have them in a steel cage match is the only thing we can find in a, a confined area. But mm, Yeah, interesting. Yeah, um, but uh, I can also see this being kind of an unofficial number one contenders match as well. I wouldn't be surprised if the winner of this uh, match possibly goes on to uh, uh, a championship match against whoever is successful um, coming out of um, uh, the Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair match. But um, I like these two. I think they're going to put on an excellent match. I'm interested to see what happens, especially with it being a street fight and uh, where they take it through the arena. Um, and uh, I think this is a good opportunity to kind of end the feud to be honest with you I think that that 
you know, this is a big kind of blow off match unless they took it to a steel cage match or something similar. I think that, you know, there's not much more they can do with this feud, in my opinion. So I'd like to see a conclusive uh, end to this match, a conclusive end to this feud. And then for the two of them to move on to fresh opponents, uh, getting closer to WrestleMania weekend. How about uh, the bros awaits uh, Matt Riddle, Pete Dunne going up against the undisputed era for the NXT tag team titles. Obviously, the bros awaits have just come off victorious in the Dusty Rose tag team classic for this year the undisputed era four times nxt tag team champions um now obviously the 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 prophecy of being draped in gold is starting to kind of, you know, show signs of coming to an end with Roddy Strong losing his North American Championship to Keith Lee a few weeks back. Um, is the same going to happen here to to UE and you know uh, Bobby Fish and uh, Kyle O'Reilly? They, they, they certainly seem to be throwing quite a bit of effort behind Matt Riddle, Pete Dunne, the Bros Awake, certainly with their kind of quite funny comedy segments that they released uh, on this week's NXT and uh, on their social media pages, which did get a chuckle from me. I've got to say. Um, I know you enjoyed them in the lash and that is that kind yeah. of a sign that they're putting a bit of stock behind the bros awaits possibly um, you know leading to another title change uh, for the undisputed era this coming Sunday yeah out of the two matches between the UE I see this one the most likely to change hands okay yeah um, as you say in the been segments they've had this week the been third one they had with Riddle and Pete with the jet it just made me ch- it just but maybe first out laughter. Oh, who's it's like, oh, I know a guy, I know a guy who got this jet. So you turn out to be Trip Ace's big first. I was expecting one person, I would, if it wasn't Trips, I was expecting Vince. If it was Vince, yeah. I would laugh even more. Yeah. I would have been died laughing from that. The chemistry between uh, Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne is really, really good. And uh, Pete Dunne's playing his character really well. Matt Riddle's really playing his character really well. But uh, I'm kind of digging what they're doing at the moment, uh, character-wise. But um, what do you think? New champions on Sunday? Yeah, definitely new champions, because it's a good way for both Pete and Matt to both get their first pieces of gold in NXT. Obviously, Pete's been... Champ- obviously, he's been a champion in WWE. Yeah, he's been the longest reigning <coughs> UK champion. But it's obviously, it's obviously now he's gone the step up from NXT UK now to main uh, main NXT. Obviously, it's a good way to have him on the belt. Um, and it's the same with Riddle because obviously Riddle's had a bit of controversy over the past few few well few months and past year. We're crossing streams with certain talent on the main roster. It's like not gone his way, but yeah. I think it's a good way to keep this like. Keep it under wraps, like okay, we keep him away from the main roster for the time being with Riddle, so we keep him with having bring the, uh, have the tag titles. Mm, yeah, good point, and I agree with you. I think the Bros Awaits are coming out the winners on Sunday night, um, and like you say, I don't think they've got any uh, anything planned feud wise for either Matt Riddle or Pete Dunne in the singles division. Um, so to give him a bit of a run, uh, quite, you know, quite an entertaining combo, quite an entertaining duo, give him a bit of a run with the tag team titles could be exactly what they need at the moment because they've got no obvious singles feuds at the moment. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I think the tag division might be in need of a bit of a, a freshness at the moment. Um, but uh, as you know, I, I wouldn't be disappointed if Yui, retains but then uh, I think that I'll be happy for Dunn and Matt Riddle if they were to win as well like I say could potentially be their first bit of silverware on the black and gold brand anyway uh, what about Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic so Keith Lee the new North American champion these two uh, in my opinion had possibly the feud of the year for 2019 they had about four or five uh, massive massive matches uh, pulling out moves that you've never seen from guys of their size and stature um, but uh, we always knew they were capable of, but, you know, they really kind of, they, they, they set NXT alight with their matches last year. And now they've got uh, kind of the most important match they've ever had together, um, you know, it, with with some silverware, with uh, a championship bout, the North American title on the line in this one. Uh, Keith Lee is on fire at the moment. He doesn't necessarily need a, a, a bout Uh, to put himself over. He's kind of done that himself, certainly with his appearance on the Survivor Series and then again at the Royal Rumble. Um, But obviously, they know they've got a big star in Keith Lee and uh, it was an obvious choice to beat Roddy Strong for the North American Championship. I suppose you could say Dominic Dijakovic is a a natural opponent um, to Keith Lee. So putting them together makes sense for Sunday nights. But uh, this is going to be a massive match, a gigantic match in 
every sense of the word. Um, and I think that they, you know, whatever they have left in the tank, whatever moves they haven't shown us yet, um, I think they're going to be pulling out all the stops. And uh, this could be um, a match of the night contender. But uh, give us your thoughts on these two, the match, and who you think might come out on top. So this is the potential, literally, of a show-stealing match. With their matches they've had so far, literally, they've topped it each time off. You put a move out of move. And like just literally just waiting in anticipation of what they can, what they they are going to deliver next. Yeah, it's just it's been all inspiring. Yeah. Literally moves they've been hitting, top rope Canadian destroyers, been um, top rope power bombs, top rope. Um, oh, sorry, I think what's Dargax's assistant finisher move? Uh, Feast your eyes from the top rope. It's literally just all inspiring, and not, not only just that, like what they're going to do next. Also, they're both very agile guys, so they're not afraid to go go to the outside and hit dives to the outside to each other as well. Totally. Yeah. Um, with it being Lee's first title defence, I see a Lee wing, so I don't think you would have him lose his first title match as yeah. champion. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. And I think you make a lot of sense there with what you're saying. And I think with it being his first uh, official title defence, um, I think it's, you know, especially with how hot he is at the moment throughout WWE. Um, and uh, I think Keith Lee could come up as an answer of mine in, in uh, one of the fan questions, one of the listener questions a bit later on. So I don't think he's dropping the title here, um, but it will be a great match. Um, and I'm pleased that this will actually be their first takeover appearance. Now they've uh, been on, uh, Keith Lee's certainly been on WWE pay-per-views. Dijakovic, uh, I don't think has had a takeover appearance, nor has Keith they were Lee. War, they're both at war games. They were at War Games. You're quite right. Yes, I stand corrected. So it would be the first individual match, but obviously that was an eight-man War Games match. So obviously their first singles match they'll have. But obviously they will have been part of Takeover Card before. Yeah, good point. Good point. I temporarily forgot about that, but that was when they were kind of had uh, kind of uh, healed their kind of uh, feud between one another, was on the same side at TakeOver War Games, and now they're kind of both on opposite sides of the ring, and this should be a great match. But I'm going for Keith Lee as well. Uh, what about Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair? So this has got kind of the added potential storyline of uh, maybe an appearance from Charlotte Flair. She said she's going to be in Portland on Sunday night. I'm predicting that Charlotte kind of comes down or is there in the crowd and uh, whether she physically gets involved in the match or maybe just as a distraction, I think that that could possibly have uh, an impact to the, the end of the match. Um, th- th- this could be interesting. I think Rhea Ripley retains in this one, but uh, you know, possibly f- through interference from Charlotte Flair, um, I've said all along that I think uh, they're possibly gearing up to maybe a, a three-way championship match at Mania, not just a match between Ripley and Charlotte Flair, but I think Bianca Belair, with certainly how they put her over big time in the Rumble last month, uh, they obviously you know have a lot of time and know what they've got in Bianca Belair. She's obviously going to be a big star on the main roster in the future. Um, but I think that Rhea Ripley's retaining. I think Charlotte gets involved somehow, uh, but I think it could potentially lead to a three-way at Mania. But uh, what about yourself, then? I see the same. I see Ripley winning. I don't see Charlotte coming out and costing her because it's something that Triple H doesn't normally do. Sure. With obviously, talent outside of NXT. Obviously, you have someone come down from the main roster. It's something that he doesn't normally want to use in, in NXT. Where well, obviously predominantly you kind of have seen this kind of angle happen in WWE main yeah. roster, so I can see Charlotte coming out after the match and saying that she's declaring her title her title match with Rip Ripley at Mania after the match. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and Belair, do you think you think although she might end up on the losing end on Sunday, do you think that she's done enough this year to possibly earn her a spot, earn herself a spot at Mania? Um, potentially, but I can't see where she will fit in on the Mania card itself. You could possibly have a rematch. If, say, this match ends in a dusty finish or double count or something, you can build up to have the rematch at TakeOver Tampa. So yeah. whoever wins the match, that match goes against Charlotte than not at Mania. Was it, it would be the night after at Mania, obviously, it's given them less, less preparation. Obviously, you think Charlotte have then the upper hand. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, OK, Johnny Gargano versus Finn Balor. So this is a match that we've kind of been anticipating now for a while, ever since Finn Balor 
turned heel um, for the first time in his WWE career on Johnny Gargano with that kind of overhead kick and beat down about four months ago, I think it was. Um, but uh, Johnny Gargano hasn't been in the ring much since. He wasn't in the ring much at all for 2019 when you think about it. But he did kind of return when he reformed, temporarily reformed DIY with Tommaso Ciampa to go up against Mustache Mountain in that excellent, excellent match at Worlds Collide last month. Um, so... I've got my thoughts on on potentially where Johnny Gargano might kind of sit in the whole grand scheme of things when it comes to Mania. But looking ahead to Sunday night, Finn Balor versus Johnny Gargano, and I've, I've said it before, this is possibly uh, the number one and number two best wrestlers on the brand. Um, and I, I think this match... Well, we've already spoken about a couple of match of the uh, match of the night contenders already, but I think this one, you know, is definitely up there with uh, not just match of the night, but maybe match of the year, Ash. But uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, Mr. Takeover, Johnny Wrestling, uh, Mr. NXT versus the longest reigning NXT champion in Finn Balor. Um, where do your kind of cards sit with this one then? Who are you going with? I'm quite tall on the fence quite at the moment, but I have an art, well, a feeling who will win it. As it's like, it's Finn's theoretically his big view since coming back on NXT. Because obviously this match is supposed to happen a vision at War Games, but due to Johnny's injury, it got postponed, and we're having it now. It's literally he's got you built the anticipation. He's literally got the art, literally the name, literal name of a dream match that we'll never thought we would see in WWE or NXT. But we might think it might have happened on the main roster, but we don't know if it would have happened. Yeah, but I. Th- feel that Finn will win the match. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Because um, it's his on. first big few match and he's only had the one defeat since he's been back yeah. on NXT to Cole. And yeah. between the two, they've probably got the best records on takeover cards in general. I think Finn's got the better out of the two, whereas Johnny has lost his last two matches. Okay. So I can see they do this thing where they think, oh, do you kill yourself, Mr. T- Mr. Takeover? How he's not won a match since his last win on Takeover was at New York, which was last Mania. So they could build this whole story like you've not won a Takeover since last year. So literally a whole year since you've last won. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I mean, my, my thoughts and feelings on this one is I think this one could be whoever wins this match will go on to uh, challenge for the NXT Championship um, at TakeOver Tampa over Mania weekend. So I honestly think that this is an unofficial number one contenders match. If Johnny wins, I think he'll go on to TakeOver Tampa to contend for the, the, the gold. Same for Finn. I think if Finn wins, he'll go on to Tampa to contend for the gold. Um, and then, like I say, you know, who might win out of Adam Cole, Tommaso Ciampa? Could we get the match that we should have got last year, Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano? If Tommaso wins on Sunday, could we get Finn Balor versus Tommaso Ciampa or Finn Balor versus Adam Cole again? Um, very, very interesting. I don't know where to go on this one, though, to be honest with you, Ash. I really don't know where to go. I think that looking further down the line, I don't know whether they're going to try and give us the match that we should have had last year in Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship, leading me to believe that Johnny might win this match and Ciampa might um, beat Adam Cole to reclaim Goldie. Um, but uh, I think I, I've got a funny feeling, you know, that that's where NXT, I think that's where WWE and Triple H are heading. So I think I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano for the win over Finn Balor on this one. Um, and I think that could lead to him being the next challenger for the gold over Mania weekend, but um, then let, let's talk about the main event on Sunday. Then Adam Cole, the current NXT champion, been a champion for quite a while now since Takeover 25 back in on, May, June, June of last year. Um, uh, going yeah, up against Tommaso Ciampa, was it? Yeah, June second, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, I remember it vividly. It was an excellent match at uh, two out of three falls stipulation match against Johnny Gargano. Uh, where Champa kind of overcame and won the gold. And he's been a, a brilliant, excellent champion since. He's really defended against all comers. We, we saw it, you know, this Wednesday, although the gold wasn't on the line, he's not afraid to kind of go out there and, and uh, face, you know, his foes. Um, but uh, Adam Cole, Tommaso Champa, this is another dream match. Like I said, at the top of the show, this is a, a dream card. All six matches are going to be going to deliver. Um, crikey, where do you go with this one? I'm going to stick with what I said earlier, and I think that 
Gargano is going to go over Finn Balor, so it makes sense for Champa to go over Cole in this one, setting up Champa, Gargano, uh, Tampa, um, WrestleMania weekend. So, um, I, 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 as much as I love Adam Cole and as much as I think he's been an excellent champion, I think that UE are losing both their gold, both their championships on Sunday night. I think uh, uh, Fish and O'Reilly are losing their tag titles. I think Adam Cole could lose against uh, Champa, setting up that match that we should have got last year over Mania weekend. But um, what's your thoughts on the main event, Adam Cole versus Champa? Uh, do, do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? I'm completely on the other side. I see Cole winning. And even though it's quite a 50 50 cut split between the two, I literally I see Cole winning and I see him chopping the title over mainly weekend. So you've got the whole thing where none of the UE have champions, have titles after TakeOver Tampa, where it gives them the opportunity to then go onto the main roster, be it Raw or SmackDown, yeah. to be the dominant faction to come in after they've lost the gold. So they're going to the next level up to take the gold from either Raw or SmackDown. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, but I'm sure you'll agree with me, Ash. Take over Portland this coming Sunday night is going to be absolutely amazing. Will you be watching live or will you have to catch it the following day? I'll try to stay up live for it. It's depending if I can stay up for it. Because with Takeover as well, it's not like we have with, like, say, the Rumble, for example, or Mania, where it's like seven hours. Well, Rumble's four and a half, Mania's normally five and a half, but Takeover is a normal, is a reasonable time to stay up for two, to, two and a half to three hours, yeah. possibly to three and a half hours. It's a reasonable time to stay up for. Yeah, no, I, I, I have work Monday afternoon going into the evening, so I can afford to stay up Monday morning, have a few hours sleep, get up and then go to work afterwards. So uh, I, I'm quite lucky that my shifts work around um, take over Portland quite nicely. So I, I'm going to get my pizza and uh, get, my, get my bottle of cola and I'll be set for take over Portland on Sunday. So that's going to be good. 